Goldwood, GW10 PC slash eight. Well, you probably saw me install these in a set of Kenwood LSP9000Ds and the customer did not want them back and I asked him, do you think it would be okay if I did a analysis on why these things failed? And he says, well, I don't care. Just do what you gotta do. So normally what I'll do is unsolder the leads right here. And uh, maybe I should try to pump up the exposure just a tad so you guys can see it better. Okay, well that should be totally washed out. So I'm gonna go ahead and heat up the soldering iron and go ahead and unsolder the leads. I did keep the original terminals in case the customer wanted them back, just in case he was gonna enter them in a speaker show at some time. It definitely be points off if you don't have the original connectors down here. So as this thing is warming up, uh, what I need to do is get back in here and slice the spider off of the uh, frame, which is connected to the magnet, and then we can pull this whole cone assembly out the top. And um, I know some audio purists are gonna be, no, you can't destroy a vintage uh, Kenwood speaker. I may have said Pioneer previously, but no, it is a Kenwood. Uh, Trio Kenwood, T10-0239-00. And so this thing is properly warmed up at this point. I'm just gonna grab a pair of needly nose pliers and then we should be able just to heat this up and pull the leads right out. Just like that. And so normally I will save this terminal board because I've had several speakers come in with broken boards and I can actually drill this out and then just put a nut and a bolt to mount them in place. Uh, let me find a little tiny knife and uh, we'll start the destruction. So I don't know if you'll be able to see what I'm doing because I can barely see what I'm doing. So I'm just going to slice the spider if I can. Yeah. Gravity. Sure, we're completely disconnected all the way around. And it certainly appears that we are. Now this should just lift completely up and out. And now we will be able to see what actually happened that caused the issue. I really expected to see a lot of scraping on the voice coil, but I don't, but I do see damage. Uh, let me enable macro zoom one moment. Okay, well there is the actual voice coil zoomed in. I should probably hold it this, this orientation right here. Let's try to get you, where, hello, where'd you go? There we go. Uh, it likes to focus on horizontal instead of vertical. So there is the actual voice coil and is that a break? Right, right there? Huh. Well, let's just take a look around this thing. So well, if anybody sees a broken wire, let me know when and where you see it. But the voice call does not appear to be burned up, so I don't think it was overdriven. 
I believe it just fatigued. You can definitely see where it was scraping right there. There we go, that's a better view with the lights. I'm so curious if that's an open right there. Wish I could actually hold it still. Try to prop it up here. Yeah, that looks like an open to me. Uh, let me try to find something, a small screwdriver or anything that I can like. No, I need a, I need a standard, not a Phillips. Sure enough, there it is. That's the problem on one of them right there. This became fatigued and stretched and unstretched that wire like that. So there is the problem on one of them. Okay, well, we definitely have a definitive diagnosis on that one. So let me zoom back out and we'll do a destructive teardown on the second one. Well, first thing, we'll unsolder the leads, just like on the last one. All right, both leads have been unsoldered. Now we'll try to do the destructive part. Let me go ahead and pump up the exposure for you guys. I know it's very dark down inside there. Okay, that should be good. Okay, I think we're good on that one, hopefully. And oh, some of the surround is still actually connected on this one. Well, not for long. All right, how did this one fail? Oh, there it is. <laughs> okay, let me zoom in on it. Maybe you can see what's going on in here. Try to get in as far as I possibly can before it begins to defocus too much. That's as far as I can go. Yep, there it is. The core has been fractured. The voice coil, what we call it, the bobbin. Wow, almost destroyed that wire too. So I'm thinking what happened was because the surround was bad, it allowed this thing to do a lot of this monkey motion. Because normally, there should only be an axial thrust in one direction. There should never be a diagonal thrust. And so I think with the defective surround, it provided a diagonal thrust like, like that. And it fractured the bobbin. That the voice coil is wound on but at least i know this guy was not just thrashing on the speakers otherwise uh, the voice coil right there would be 
dark, dark brown, and you'd actually see the enamel coating bubbling up on it. But at least we do have resolution as to why these failed. There is the other one, same thing. Not quite as bad, but definitely had a uh, diagonal thrust on it instead of just a axial thrust. Yeah, that it's toast. Too bad it wasn't wound on like an aluminum bobbin. Probably would have been okay, but uh, it's wound on this phenolic bobbin. Anyhow, we have closure, finally. All right, everyone, thanks for watching this quick little video, which is gonna be probably about 10 minutes long, maybe, on the uh, disassembly of the Kenwood model number here, uh, the T10-0239-00 speakers out of the LSP 9000D tower speakers from 1985. I certainly hope you enjoyed the video. Um, go ahead, leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below, good or bad. I do try to respond when I have time. While you're down there, if you could please hit the subscribe button and like this video. It does help my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, in Instagram, Twitter, or X at NorCal715. You can email me, NorCal715videos at gmail.com. Um, as of right now, first part of July, if you want to contact me, continue leaving a message in, or a comment in one of the videos. Everyone, thanks for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, just one thing worthy of note, I believe that these have been resurrounded because I see surround glued on the back of the unit and then new surrounds glued to the front of the speaker. So I believe that these were resurrounded at one time. The customer told me he did purchase these units from a local stereo shop here in Chico, California, many, many moons ago. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a great day. Bye-bye.